Hi, everyone. Um, I am ACC Disha Chauhan, the Faculty for Corporate and Business Law, as well as Business Technology and Financial Accounting at Fintran Global. So welcome to the Corporate and Business Law Orientation. So first, let's try to understand the subject Corporate and Business Law. Now, this subject is, of course, they have developed because at the end of the day, we are studying to become accountants, right? Not lawyers. So there is not too much legal jargon or not so much in detail or depth as you would be expecting when you would be probably doing some course in law. So keeping that in mind, they have developed this you know, subject around that, that you have enough knowledge, uh, the general legal framework knowledge, which is necessary in any, any profession, uh, especially with regards to accounting. Uh, so they have developed it in such a manner. So there's not too much in detail or depth of one particular topic, but they have touched upon various topics so that one is aware of these general legal frameworks. So the aim is, of course, to develop your knowledge and skills and an understanding of this general legal framework so that you also know when would you need to you know, get any legal advice whenever there is necessary with regards to your business or work. So moving on to the syllabus area. So these are the syllabus areas which are also covered by the FINRAM's you know, sessions. So these are the syllabus areas and we'll go one by one in detail and seeing what does each syllabus area entail. So can you see the screen as well? Can I get a thumbs up? Is the screen also visible? Okay. So this is your syllabus area A, wherein we will you know, be studying about the essential elements of any legal system. Here you will learn about you know, your political and legal system and also about international trade when you learn about you know, various organizations. We have our WTO, OECD. So in brief about that, what these organizations are, what are their features. Then the second session of this syllabus area is about code-based adjudication and ADR, which is your alternate dispute resolution. Now, what is code-based adjudication? Basically, whenever something happens, you go to the court, right? That is your code-based adjudication, whether it's your criminal case, civil cases, that happens in a court. Other than that, also, there might be people who might want to you know, resolve any dispute, but they do not want to go to the court due to XYZ reason, because they maybe don't want that issue to go in public, because obviously court proceedings are uh, public and they are privy to the general public also. So for such things, or you don't want to spend that much money because court cases are lengthy and because of the length, the cost also is increasing. So that's why you would want to uh, you know, resolve any dispute or any issue by using your ADR mechanism, wherein two parties, they come together, they decide, okay, instead of going to a court, we will be hiring an arbitrator and, uh, you know, we will be trying to uh, come to a conclusion wherein that arbitrator will finally decide, okay, that this party, uh, let's say, has to compensate the other party or whatever is the thing. So instead of going to the court, going through that long procedure, you decide that, okay, let's not go to the court. Let's alternatively try to resolve this dispute. So this is all what you study here. Here comes various things that, okay, who can be an arbitrator? What's the required qualification? What is an arbitral award? When does an arbitration end? And all of that is covered here. Then moving on to your international business transactions. Now here, of course, we'll be learning about you know, contracts for your international sale of goods. Basically, we'll learn that when, at what point we will say that, okay, uh, someone has accepted an offer. What is acceptance? What is an offer? What point you will say that, okay, this has been accepted. Can it be withdrawn? What are you know, the conditions for that? And all of that you are going to learn because obviously when you are, let's say, in a business, you are in country A, someone is country B. So there are going to be problems, right? Because your laws are different, that country's laws are different. So that's why for these contracts of international sale of goods, what all laws will apply, all of that you're going to be learning. What will be the obligations and risk in these contracts where there is international sales? That if one party, let's say, refuses, the buyer, let's say, refuses to pay, then that's a risk, right? So how that could be mitigated? What will be the obligations on both parties if one party has the goods in hand? Let's say the seller has it. So is it his responsibility at that time that, okay, I need to protect the goods, make sure that it's not getting spoiled. When does the risk exactly pass? when the goods are delivered or when the carrier has taken 
so all of this is something that will be covered in this chapter then moving on to the next syllabus area is your transportation and payment of international business transaction wherein there's only one chapter regards to your transportation documents which is many documents like for example a bill of lading so once a seller uh, he has given the goods to the first carrier who will be let's say shipping this goods uh, and bringing to the buyer so the carrier gives a document saying a bill of lading that okay i have actually received the goods from the seller so that is all that also acts as in proof so various transportation documents we'll be talking about that in this chapter means of payment how the payment can be done whether by a bill of exchange or any international credit transfers wherein you use banks credit transfers so the if buyer is in another country he will inform his bank in his country that bank will then send trans, uh, transfer the funds to another bank which might be in another country so all of that all these means of payment what are the rules regarding that all of this something you'll be seeing in this syllabus area then syllabus area d which is little bigger because there are many chapters in this which talks about your formation and constitution of any business organization here you will be talking about learning about agency law partnerships these are very small chapters just touching upon these topics so what is an agency law so if i am a person uh, and i want to do business with somebody so instead of me directly going making contracts i might be a principal i'll hire somebody to do that for me right maybe i'm a football team so a football team will hire someone an agent who will go around meet the various clubs so that person becomes your agent you're the principal now the agent meets the third parties with which they can form a contract with the principal so the contract is basically between principal and third party the agent is basically acting as a you know mediator to see that okay everything is going fine for example when we go for house hunting so we are the principal we want to let's say buy a house broker becomes the agent for us who then goes around and you know maybe there are various customers and third parties who are offering their houses for sale so he'll go he'll meet them he'll look at their properties and then he'll come back to me so in agency law we talk about various things what are the different types of agency you know who becomes an agent agency by necessity or ostensible agency uh, what are the some rules and what are the powers all of that is covered in agency law then moving on to partnerships partnerships already something you would have briefly studied uh, back in your school in simple terms partnership is basically two or more people coming together forming up a partnership wherein they decide to you know do something whether it's for a limited time or it's a grown contract what is a limited liability partnership what is an unlimited liability partnership what are the various rules regard to partnership when will a partnership be terminated whether once maybe the partners are becoming bankrupt or the partnership is only become insolvent uh, so all the different areas are covered in that that what exactly happens and how exactly a partnership is formed and how are these two different limited liability and unlimited liability in an unlimited liability it's basically that you know partners have unlimited liability it's not limited to any particular thing so if anything goes wrong they will have to pay from their personal uh, you know finances also but for a limited partnership limited liability partnership which is similar to a company wherein uh, you will have limited liability only so if things go haywire if your company goes bankrupt your partnership goes bankrupt you will be only having any limited liability and not be responsible for the whole thing then we talk about corporations and legal personality wherein of course we talk about the company and in company also we see private company public company legal personality that is a separate legal identity so till now uh, we have studied and if you have already given your business technology and all of that so you would have you know heard about sole traders partnerships so in that we see that okay sole traders do not have a separate legal identity so if i am a business owner i have my own business and i'm the sole trader if something was to go wrong then i am liable for that i will have to maybe sell my car my house but i will have to pay back in case of a company there is limited liability that is the members who are forming the company they are a different entity and the company as such is treated as a different entity so if anything goes wrong company is going to liquidation the members are only liable up to the amount of the pending uh, capital contribution 
other than that they are not going to be selling their own personal things to pay off the creditors that's why it's called limited liability because they have a separate legal personality so this is a very important you know part separate legal personality and uh, wherein you understand that okay how separate legal personality affects a sole trader and a company then we talk about company formation in which we see okay what all are required uh, you know what is a memorandum of association articles of association we study about constitution of a company uh, all of that we talk in detail that okay what all comprises and you know what are the documents needed what are all the things that a company needs to do all of that is discussed in this syllabus area then we move on to syllabus area e which is all about your capital and financing how basically you're financing your company so you could have a share capital right wherein you you have your shareholders and uh, you know they are your members also or you could have loan capital now loan capital the people here they are not your shareholders but they are actually your creditors you have to pay them back so we will see differences between how a shareholder is different than a creditor then we talk about capital maintenance and dividend law that every company has to maintain a capital at a level so what is this capital maintenance and why do they need to do so because if i don't do so and something happens my company goes bankrupt then of course the creditors all the people who i owe money as a company they have no place to go so that's why there's a certain regulations that you have to maintain capital at a certain level so that if something goes wrong at least those assets can be sold off something can be done to pay off these various parties in this we also talk about dividend law preference dividend ordinary share dividend and when will it be paid can it be paid you know any time what is cumulative dividend uh, who will get preference over dividend and all of that from where dividend has to be paid can it be paid from any you know reserve no uh, not really so all of that is something covered in this chapter then we move on to the another syllabus area which is your f wherein we talk about your management administration and how would you regulate your companies here we talk in detail about company directors what are the various roles and responsibilities of directors we also talk about various types of directors there are de jure de facto directors who are those how are they different from others shadow directors non executive directors executive directors so each of these are somewhat different to one another so what are those differences how they are different what are their roles responsibilities as such is something is covered in this chapter then you move on to other company officers so like you have directors who are of course very important in a company you have other officers also who are very important whether it's your company secretary or your auditor so in this chapter you cover other than your directors that okay who is a company secretary what are the requirements for someone to be you know uh, be a qual uh, qualified company secretary what are the various responsibilities of that company secretary do you actually need a company secretary for both private or public company or there's like no requirement as such so for public companies it's compulsory for private companies as such it's not compulsory can a sole director be a company secretary no it cannot be so all of these things are covered in that session along with about the auditors who are also your other company officers that who will have the power to hire these auditors what are the responsibilities of these auditors that you have and who will they be reporting to if the auditors want to resign due to any circumstances what powers then they do have can they hold a meeting can they you know present their views to the members so all of that is something which is covered in this cha particular chapter then moving on to uh, company meetings and resolution here the various meetings you know yearly you have your general meetings annual general meetings and any other meeting so these two are your main meetings so what happens in an agm what all basically what all the business areas what are the nitty gritties that are discussed in an agm all of that is bifurcated all of that is something we learn about your resolutions so whether what is an ordinary resolution what is a special resolution who can use a written resolution so only private companies can use that how is ordinary special different what circumstances would you go for a special resolution other than ordinary 
So all of this is something which is covered in detail in this chapter. When in you detail learn, okay, what exactly is a resolution and when would you exactly need to use that resolution. Then moving on to syllabus area G, which is your insolvency law. Here you learn about your insolvency and administration. Basically, when the company is become insolvent, bankrupt, and let's say they want to liquidate. So then there are various types, whether you want to do a voluntary liquidation, whether it's a compulsory liquidation that the court has, let's say, send out an order, or it's an involuntary liquidation. So all of this will depend on certain circumstances, whether you're a company solvent, insolvent. So all of that is covered in this insolvency administration on the other hand is opposite of liquidation when you want to save the company so you know the company is not doing well you know it's on the verge of bankrupt but instead of going into liquidation you want to give it a try you want to save it somehow so you would enter into administration and administration and liquidation are mutually exclusive that when one is happening the other cannot happen. So, so in this, we learn who is an administrator, what will be the administrator's, administrator's role and responsibilities, how will you carry out this administration, when exactly you will say that, okay, the administration has to end now. So all of this is something covered in this. And finally, we have a last syllabus area, which is H, wherein we talk about your corporate fraudulent and criminal behavior. Here, basically, you understand what is fraud, what will be termed as fraud. And here you learn about insider trading, insider dealing, money laundering, what are the various stages of money laundering, and all of that related to criminal behavior. If somebody is doing wrong, whether it's the directors or any other person, so what, you know, how much uh, fine or imprisonment can they face? All of that is covered in detail in this particular session. So these are your syllabus areas which we have gone through. And these are the various sessions which, of course, Fintram Global has covered in detail. We have sessions on this. And like I said, all of the things uh, in brief I have mentioned, but this is something which we have studied. So moving on to the exam structure. Now, corporate and business law is also an on-demand exam. So basically... Uh, these 365 days, you can decide which day you want to give the exam and then you can just go ahead and do so. Uh, we have two sections here, section A and section B. Section A is your normal multiple choice questions wherein you have two markers also, one markers also, the normal usual multiple choice questions. Then you have your section B, which is your multi-task question. Here you will have, uh, you know, five questions worth six marks each. Here you'll basically get a little bit of a scenario sort of a thing and there'll be different tasks. It could be an MCQ also, it could be a gap filling question, something to match on, something like on those lines. So these are two sections and time allotted, of course, is two hours. Corporate and business law, as we all know it, is a 100% theoretical exam. There is no practical here. Uh, there's no questions here. It's full on theory. So students tend to find it some students tend to find it boring who do not like theory. So the key is to, you know, understand the various concepts. Don't just study for the aim that, oh, I just want to clear the exam, move on, and then just forget everything about whatever I have studied. Like this, if you ever follow any approach for any exam, you are never going to grow or learn. So it is important. Whatever is being taught, you try to understand why is it being taught? What is the actual application of this? Because whatever is taught, it's not unnecessary. I don't think any chapter is unnecessary. All of this knowledge is something which you need in your life. So it is not too difficult. It's not that something, you know, you have to do rote learning and remember few many things or dates or anything like that. You don't have to remember any case number or anything like that. You just have to understand, of course, all of the various concepts that you are learning. And then, of course, apply the same. So time management is very important. Uh, it's a two-hour paper. It's a theory paper. So you will be reading questions, options. So, you know, students tend to uh, waste a lot of time. They are not able to manage their time properly. So it's important that whenever you are even practicing, you are managing that time. So let's now discuss some tips for answering the various multiple choice questions. Firstly is you need to read the question thoroughly. Many a times if the question is three, four, four, four lines long, they don't want to read it. Students will just read a part of it and they'll be like, okay, this seems like the answer. I've seen a similar question and they'll just 
mark any option which is a very wrong thing to do you need to read the entire question and you need to read it thoroughly you do not know what the question is so you read it thoroughly and when you're reading any question make sure you are giving your 100 percent focus on that thing if at that moment you're thinking about something else you'll read it you then you'll realize oh i didn't read it properly then you'll again waste few seconds or a minute to read again and you are wasting that time so whenever you're going on to a question make sure you have cleared your mind you don't have to think about the past question once anything is done you move forward you don't go back and dwell upon oh what should i should i change my answer in the last question no what is done is done you keep moving forward and when of course the time is left then you always come back so read the question thoroughly think before answering don't rush while time management is of course important we do not say that okay just you know quickly answer everything you need to think for a moment that okay what could what are they exactly asking is it a tricky question or it's straightforward and you need to understand see weigh the options and then choose the answer do not rush make sure you are reading clearly sometimes we read it in uh, you know hurry manner question may, may have asked about some advantages we read in a manner we think they are asking disadvantages we read the first option which could have been a disadvantage and we just click on that so make sure you are reading both the question and the answer also all the options properly and do not rush before answering you may find that none of the options are matching your answers which is fine not everybody is not, not going to know 100% of the uh, you know questions all their answers so that's absolutely fine there will be many questions that you might not know the answer of but you not do not need to panic read the question reread the question to ensure that you are understanding it and answering the requirement if you write a question you're not sure about it you not 100% sure that okay what could be the answer read it again think what is the answer what are they exactly asking me eliminate any obvious wrong answers there are many times in a question where few options they have just given as distraction which you know can't be the answer so try to first eliminate those wrong answers consider which of the remaining answers could be the most likely correct option and you should select that option but in case you are still unsure do not waste time on that which is something many students do and they end up wasting a lot of time and leaving even the questions that they would have known so if you are unsure about it it's fine make a note flag it continue to the next question come back to that question later when you will be targeting it the fresh set of eyes it will be far better and easier also first you should always try to do whatever you are good at whatever you know and then come back to the ones which you are unsure of revisit your unanswered questions and again like i said target these tough ones with a fresh set of eyes if you are unsure you really read it one more time you still don't know what could be the answer it's fine move on and keep on doing whatever you know and whenever you get stuck on a particular question just flag it for them and then come back when at the end if time is left come back read those questions again now try to answer them because now you are little calm because you know you have covered most of the exam or you have finished whatever you knew so now you don't have at least that tension oh that only this much time is left and so much is pending and finally answer all questions even if you are unsure of the answer which is one of the most important thing there is no negative marking in acc exams so this is a very big thing since there is no negative marking there is absolutely no harm in trying out or clicking on any option if you have tried everything if you have read a question you tried few things you still are not able to get the answer absolutely fine not to worry still just click on any option which you feel could be the answer there is no negative marking so many times students just leave it they think that oh i don't know the answer let me just leave it why you should do that when there is no negative marking you should still go ahead answer that questions it could be that you could get a right answer so make sure you are at least at least clicking on an option don't just leave it like that you should always try to uh, think that okay what could be the answer but if you are not able to find absolutely okay at least click on some option do not let those marks go on because you could have gain marks in that maybe it would have been the right answer whatever you were thinking 
so click on any option and in the end uh, sometimes we don't have much time left and uh, you know there are like two four five minutes left and we are like okay i don't know how much i have to do uh, four or five questions are left i really don't have time to read then also at least click on any option i would say just click on any answer any option if like literally no time is left and you still have some unanswered question just click on anything so that maybe by chance also if it's correct then why not right so always answer all questions first you should definitely give it a try nobody is saying just click on anything give it a try but if you're not able to answer then at the end as a last resort just click on at least some answer some option all right what should be your approach to preparation now since this is also an on-demand exam because as such there is no date provided by acc that okay on this day exam is being conducted so what happens students usually don't plan it and they are like okay i'll give exam in five weeks time then two weeks pass they have still not studied or covered much syllabus then they again say okay from today five weeks and they start procrastinating so we should not be doing that just because a date has not been given by ACC. at least you should set a date you should say that all right today i decide that five weeks from now or six weeks from now depending on what you're doing if you are working or if you're studying of course there are other commitments other things to manage as well so you need to plan accordingly you are the best judge for that if you think your college exams are going at that time then of course you will need some more time instead of five months you will say okay six uh, i mean weeks you will say okay six weeks maybe i'll take or seven weeks but you need to at least set a date before you start at least set a date of course you can change that date in any circumstance but don't just keep on changing the date because you know you are like okay i because i only have to decide so it doesn't matter set out a date whichever date you feel okay this time i don't have any other commitments this will be a perfect time and then plan accordingly first step should be that you need to complete your entire syllabus we can't be doing cherry picking here we cannot say that okay this seems important that doesn't seem that important we are not making question papers you and i are not doing that so we can't do this we can't cherry pick and say okay this seems important this does not seem important everything is important the syllabus is developed in a way they have included only important things so everything is important you cannot leave any part just because you find it boring or you don't like it complete the entire syllabus students who complete the entire syllabus and of course follow the other steps they will definitely have a higher chances of clearing than those students who do not do that second step is of course practice questions now even though this is a theoretical exam and the biggest mistake we tend to then do is it's a theory exam i don't really need to practice anything i'll just see i'll see the content and it, i'm good to go no you still have to practice questions and just by looking at questions maybe in our video question marathon that is not enough you need to on your own do it or like either with the faculty when they are if you're watching the video you pause before the answer you try to solve it or afterwards you are yourself solving each and every question because you need to practice on your own that is the only way to clear be it any exam whether theory or practical or mixture you need to practice questions when you're done with questions practice again and again only those who practice who do lots of questions they are more comfortable during the exam day so practice 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 do as many questions as it is possible for you to do you should be watching our revision session at least two times so we provide revision boot camp where you have your revision sessions question marathons so the revision session is basically the revision of the entire syllabus covering all of the syllabus areas which we just discussed so it is important you are watching that video at least two times and definitely before your exam instead of watching separate videos uh, watch the revision session that is going to be helpful because you don't have to go to 10 places 10 videos you can just watch the revision session at once go through the notes of the revision revision session and then you will be confident that okay i have revised everything completely so watch it at least two times this is just minimum of course you can go more than two times but minimum definitely you have to watch it two times you must watch again the video question marathon also at least twice both the parts section a section b both you have to watch it at least twice and like i said watching is not enough 
you have to practice you need to understand those questions if i am solving it you are thinking oh yeah i'm understanding but that is not how it happens you need to actually solve it on your own also so watch the video question marathon at least twice and also practice and solve those questions on your own do a mock exam this is something very important which most of the students ignore because they think that oh it's a theory paper you don't need to give a mock exam this is absolutely wrong giving a mock exam is very important and that to giving it in those exact conditions that is you have to lock yourself in a room believe that it is actually your exam today set a timer for 2 hours and in those 2 hours only give the exam when the timer goes off you need to stop at that time of course you need to stop and see how much you have done you can definitely solve the entire paper to see you know how much uh, you know whether you know those questions or not but you need to see that okay i i was able to solve maybe this many questions in 2 hours so i know that i need to improve in my time management so that's why giving a mock exam is very important students who do not give a mock exam their chances of clearing goes way down than those students who give a mock exam so giving a mock exam is very important and in those conditions if you are taking 4 5 hours then there is no point so make sure you're setting up that timer giving a mock exam as if you're giving an actual real exam because you need to feel that pressure you need to feel that tension so that on your exam day you are relaxed and calm more than what you would have been like you would be freaking out if you have not practiced or given a mock exam and of course step 7 is definitely you need to attend your exam um it is like i said an on demand exam you, so you will be deciding on that date so make sure you are deciding on the date when you do not have any other commitments uh if you have anything going on in college or college exams that time obviously do not plan your exam then because then you will be having lot of pressure you have to give your college exams plus this so choose a month choose a week wherein you are you know more comfortable as such you do not have many other things going around so that you can plan it accordingly so that you can just focus on this exam so whichever month whichever date you feel okay this time i do not have any other commitments so you pick that date and you attend your exam it is important that you are you know uh, deciding in advance like i said because this is an on demand exam what happens is we tend to just procrastinate procrastinate that okay i'll give five weeks from now then two weeks happen you are still not targeted or completed a good amount of syllabus so that's why it's important that you set out a date in, on the beginning that okay i plan to give this exam five or six or seven weeks from now and this time i will not have any other thing so i can go ahead and give my exam so then of course all you have to do is attend your exam and like i said it is a theory exam so it is important it's still important that you practice questions we tend to only practice when there is a practical exam which is very wrong even in your theory exams you have to practice questions you need to solve questions on your own only then it will be possible for you to achieve a score which you desire and revision video question marathon all of this is very important and all of this has been designed in such a way so that you know it can help you out and you get a flavor of your exam and mock exam like i said again very very important give a mock exam that too in those conditions that is you have to set out a timer because time management is very important in such exams and this is to still at a very basic level when you move forward to other levels other exams time management is going to become even more you know important so from the beginning only that's why you need to set your goals right and make sure you are planning everything uh, when it comes to studying if you are in college or whatever you are doing so you need to plan it weekdays how much i'm going to study weekends are more free so i can increase the number of hours this week i'll be completing at least this much so we provide you with a study plan as well so you can follow that you can you know see exactly how much you are lagging behind or you are are you on the track and accordingly can plan your exam so thank you and um, if there is any doubts or anything like if you want to know anything about the procedure uh, of registration or if you have already enrolled that's great uh, but if anything else you can reach out to the team and uh, 
for any doubts related to the law exam, an email ID would have been shared where any queries can be, of course, emailed to that ID, which I will be seeing since I'm the faculty. So I will be now uh, stop with the sharing. And if there are any questions, if you have any questions, something that you want to ask, so you can go ahead and ask that. Aditya, let me know, are you studying in school, college? I'm in a college, ma'am, first all, year. All right. You didn't become? Yes. Okay. So have you given any other papers before? Yes, ma'am. I have cleared the first three-level knowledge uh, exams. All right. Okay. Is there anything that you want to ask, Aditya? Ma'am, one doubt that I have, and how much time it generally needs to to complete the entire syllabus of law and be fully prepared so uh, it will of course depend on your other commitments so if you are like you said you are in college so if you have like every day you're going to college and all of that so maybe you will not be able to put in so much of hours in your weekdays but if you are able to put good amount, uh, like at least you are able to give, let's say, on your weekdays, uh, let's say two to three hours and on weekends more, then it is definitely achievable in five to six weeks, depending on your capacity and your, you know, how much work, other work you have, whether it's college or anything else. So, but five to six weeks is a very good amount of time to complete everything with your, you know, revision, mock exam, everything included. Like after five to six weeks, you should be able to give your exam. Thank you, ma'am. All right. Anything else, Aditya? No, ma'am. Thank you. All right. So then I will end this session. Uh, and if there are any other... So you have already enrolled, Aditya, with us? Yes, ma'am. All right. Uh, one second. And one other thing that I, I, that I wanted to ask was that I have... Uh, I have received the the classes and the mm -hmm. and the revision boot camp. Mm -hmm. The questions that you have given in the in the in the revision boot camp mm -hmm. is is that enough or we have to practice more before the exam? So the questions which are given are of course enough. Uh, you know, it is covering all of your. Uh, what do you say, uh, syllabus areas, all the sessions that we have uh, uh, done. So that is good enough. Uh, but of course, if you want to still go ahead, practice, nobody is stopping you, you can go ahead and do that. But if you ask from the, that standpoint, it is definitely enough. Uh, you don't need to do anything else. Uh, if you just focus on those questions, practice that again and again, you are good to go. You don't really have to go to 10 other places, but there are students who want to do more. So we don't stop them from doing that. But definitely it is enough. You really don't have to get to 10 other books and you know do all of that because it's enough. Uh, we have developed in such a way that it all the syllabus areas and everything is covered. Anything else? Uh, anyone has any other question? Thank you, ma'am. Yeah, no problem with it. All right, so if nobody has any questions, we'll be ending the session and we'll be again coming out live in uh, some time, uh, of course. And uh, I think it's the same question. All right, huh? so we will be coming out live again, uh, wherein we'll be discussing, maybe going through some examiner report or technical articles. So live interactions will be happening. And other than that, if there are any queries, an email ID is provided, wherein of course you can mail that. So all the best, like I said, plan uh, beforehand when you want to give and study, of course, revise and practice and time management is again very important. So thank you for joining in. And yeah, I'll be ending then since there's no other questions. Thank, thank you, ma'am. All right, thank you. Bye-bye.